Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 173 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron, and I'm so pleased that you're here with me today. Today, we are talking to the awesome Chanel Clayton, and she was wonderful. I loved her book, Next Year in Havana, which you might have read. It's a pretty big book, and... I really enjoyed how she talked about planning her life, but maybe not her writing. So I know that you are going to enjoy listening to that. This will be a very short intro because um, I have so much to do. I'm a little bit behind in everything. And the news is big. The news is bad. The news is scary. So I want to remind you to get your writing done. Writing is a very true and real place where we can lose ourselves and kind of walk away from what the world is shouting. I urge you to put down the phone, stop reading the headlines, um, take some really deep breaths, maybe do a little bit of meditation, sink into that book that you have been putting off reading. That is what I'm doing right now. And it's been marvelous. And honor yourself as a writer. Maybe read one of those writing books that you have up there on the shelf. Um, as we are practicing social dis distancing. Um, yeah, it's a great time to be purchasing reading and telling other people about books. So we are going to continue to do that on the show. I'm going to tell you about a book right now that you might not know is out there because I'm very bad at self-promotion. It is called Letters to a New Author and basically it's a compilation of a lot of my emails that I have sent encouraging writers and right now you can get a free preview of it just to see what it's like. Um, I think it's probably the first 30 pages or so of those letters and it's a great thing to do to read if you are social distancing, which for me is hard to pronounce, social distancing. You can get uh, it free by going to rachelherron.com slash letters, rachelherron.com slash letters, totally free. Or you can just go to any um, of your favorite ebook tailors and look for Rachel Heron Letters to a New Author. And I hope you enjoy that. All else is well around here. I'm working at home which um, makes it very hard to write my words. I'm just such a terrible first draft writer at home, and I just have to suck it up and do it, just like you do, just like writers have to do. It's part of our job to get it done when it's hard. So I'm experimenting with different places in the house for me to try writing. Um, my next spot is going to be the corner of the kitchen table. I mean, the dining room table, which I've never sat at before. So that can also be really helpful to just change perspective a little bit. Um, I am also, oh, I'm teaching a class at Berkeley this weekend. It is now switched to Zoom. So I must kind of change my teaching outline which I need to do right after this I'm very much looking forward to teaching that one though it's one of my favorites on um, preparing to publish what do you need to know about traditional publishing versus uh, indie slash self-publishing and how do you decide which way to go so I'm going to be working on that and I hope that you are getting some of your own writing done and I hope that you are finding some peace somewhere from all of the noise it's important take care of you that is what I'm going to urge you to do right now today and tomorrow and the next day take care of yourself so that we can take care of everyone else it's really important so I send love and hope and fun and get some writing done and then find me wherever I am on the internet and tell me how it went okay I'll talk to you soon my friends well, I could not be more pleased today to welcome to the show Chanel Clayton. Hi, Chanel. Hi. I am thrilled, thrilled to talk to you. I loved Next Year in Havana, and I just was like, that's one of the brilliant things about doing the show is I get to bring on writers that I love. So, um, fantastic. Let me give you a little bit of a, an introduction here. Chanel Clayton is the New York Times and USA Today bestselling author of Reese Witherspoon Book Club Pick Next Year in Havana and When We Left Cuba. Originally from Florida, Chanel grew up on stories of her family's exodus from Cuba following the events of the Cuban Revolution. Her passion for politics and history continued during her years spent in England, where she earned a bachelor's degree in international relations 
from Richmond, the American International University in London, and a master's degree in global politics from the London School of Economics and Political Science. That is very fancy sounding. Uh, <laughs> Chanel also received her Juris Doctorate from the University of Southern, South Carolina School of Law. She loves to travel and has lived in the Caribbean, Europe, and Asia. Well, welcome. So Thank you. tell me a little bit about what your life looks right like right now. Are you writing full time or are you? Yeah, I do. Yes. So I'm writing full time. Um, I've been writing full time for a while, which which kind of helps um, yeah. to keep up with everything. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we had to push this episode because illness has been going around and and you've got at least one child. I do. Yes. Yeah. So that's. I love talking to mothers because I do not know how you do it. Um, so, and that's why we're going to be talking about process, which is my favorite thing to chat about. How do you get it done? What is your personal writing process? Um, it really varies by book. And I will say, you know, it changes in terms of all the other obligations. I think that's one of the things I didn't really realize when I started writing is how much time goes into marketing and publicity mm -hmm. and social media and everything else. Um, so really, it just depends on the book and kind of where I am in my life. Um, if I have a release coming up, I kind of know that I'm not going to be writing very much because I spend quite a bit of time promoting um, the release. Or if I'm in edits, you know, sometimes I'll push the book um, that I'm drafting to just focus on editing the one that um, that I'm working on with my editor. So it's really, um, I think, kind of about flexibility, mm -hmm. you know, working with the schedule, working with what your publisher needs, and also um, what the book needs. I mean, every book is very different for me. Sometimes I really front load my research. Um, other times I kind of research as I go. It, it really just depends on um, how much kind of background information I have on the story and uh, the time period or how much I really have to kind of get myself up to speed. And where and when do you do all that work? Are you a morning person? Are you a fit it in while the kid's at school kind of person? Or um, I just kind of write as I need to. Um, it, it really depends. You know, I was on a traveling and so my editor needed something. And so I was late at night kind of working, um, getting up early the next morning. Sometimes I work during the day. I mean, it, it really just depends on kind of where I am. Um, the only thing that's really consistent with my writing process, I would say, is I write in Scrivener, mm. which I find really helpful. Um, and um, that, that's probably the biggest thing I would say that kind of carries me through the different books um, but, but beyond that it changes quite a bit what is your favorite thing about Scrivener and I also use it and love it but yeah I think for historical fiction it's really helpful mm. um, I like that I can have all of my research there so it's easily accessible um, I like that I can kind of shift POVs I do a lot of dual timelines or multiple POVs in my books and I like that you can kind of keep the scenes and then move things around quite easily when you're going through the revision process. Um, and I just feel like I really get a very comprehensive kind of macro look at the book um, using Scrivener because it's all right there. You know, you can drop all of your research links in and so everything's very easily accessible. Um, Microsoft Word I use when I edit with my editor, but I feel like I don't get as much of the high level view of, of the book when I'm in that. That's really more when I'm kind of digging in on the little details. Yeah, I totally agree. Do you, I, I color code my points of view characters. Yeah. That is the best trick. It helps so much. Because you're yeah, like, oh, so I've been in her point of view for five scenes and not in mm -hmm. her point of view for, you know, forever. And she only had one 10,000 pages ago, you know, or 10,000 words ago, not 10,000 pages. That would be too much. Yeah, no, it really does make a huge difference um, to kind of have that that ability. And and it, it does, I think, give you, like you're saying, that idea of, okay, this isn't balanced here. I need to kind of balance this out. Exactly. And you could color code, like, the things you have to keep an eye on. I have a color-coded empty scene right now that says, change plot completely to here. And then I started writing forward with what I knew the book was going to be. And I know that everything behind that you know before that red line is that that's going to be a lot of revision mm -hmm. yeah yeah um what is your biggest challenge when it comes to writing i think all the other stuff you juggle definitely um like i said before you know when i started writing i just didn't appreciate how many different hats you kind of wear as an author um you can be graphic designer you can be accountant you know bookkeeper it, it kind of goes to all these different gamuts and a lot of times it's stuff that you might not have a background in so you really have to kind of get yourself up to speed. So I think it's just juggling the time commitment of where do I invest my time? How do I kind of keep balance? And 
when you kind of get those last minute things that come on, you know, how do you shift that with the deadline you're working on? Uh, how does that feel to you to juggle things like that? Because I find myself very resentful when I'm like, oh, God, I actually have to spend time on these copy edits. You know, I, I just I get I forget over and over and over again that you'll get copy edits. You'll get all these things coming in. How did how do your emotions handle that? Um, I think I've gotten pretty used to it now. And I think it's just kind of figuring out, like I've learned that when I get copy edits, I cannot do two projects at once. So I, I know. know some people that will I try to that. draft. I, yeah, and I my brain it. just doesn't work that way. So I have to basically clear my schedule, push through the deadline, and then um, I can go back to whatever I was working on. So little things like that have helped. Um, my editor is really amazing at communicating. And I think earlier in my career, I was very much like a people pleaser. And I always wanted to be like, oh, no problem. I can do that, you know. But I've kind of learned now they really want you to turn it in your best book. So if there's something going on, I'll just be like, hey, you know, I, I need an extra few days and they're really great about working with me. Or, you know, I, I think I have a better handle of what time I actually need in my process for copy edits. So I can look at my schedule and be like, OK, this is a little tight, but I know I can do it because I've done it before. Um, so I think it just kind of is more about getting comfortable with it. Um, I'm a really big planner person. I have wow. a day designer. I'm a, I like a paper planner. And so I really just am very careful about scheduling. And I always kind of leave um, probably about a month, I would say, in my drafting process that I know is kind of free day, that are, are free days, because I know I'm probably going to get proofs. So I'm going to get copy edits on the book before it. And so I can kind of build in that time so I'm not scrambling. So I think it's little things like that that help. You are much more logical than I am. <laughs> I'm just always scrambling at the last minute. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, it's not always perfect. So, I mean, it, it sounds great. Sometimes life happens. And yeah. Do yeah. Are, you, are you with Penguin? Is that what I'm remembering? I am. Yes. Which imprint? Berkeley. Who's your editor? Uh, Kate Siever. Oh, my gosh. Okay, here's something that I'll admit because I know she'll never hear it. Um, but... I have been wanting to work with Kate for so long. She almost bought a book of mine a long time ago. I was with Danielle Aww. Perez when I was at Berkeley. Oh, okay, um, yeah, yeah I, I love Danielle. I love I love all my editors, but Kate Seaver, dream dream editor. I, I have to say, she is like one of my favorite people. Like she's just been amazing, and I've been with her for five years now. We've been oh. no, I guess six, almost six. Um, so. She's just like so supportive, really wonderful to work with. And I think it's so nice as a writer when you kind of get into sync with an editor. Like, yes. you know, you have that kind of history and you know how each other works and it, it just helps a lot. So yeah, she's she's amazing. I, I highly recommend her. That's yeah. awesome. Bucket list. Uh, what is your biggest joy when it comes to writing? Um, I love that every day really feels like an adventure. I mean, mm. I'm I'm not at all a plotter. Um, I really start with like the shell of an idea. So and... you're a planner. You love planning, like life, but not, yes. uh, okay, yes. that's really interesting. I don't know if I've it's, ever heard that combination. Yeah, I know, it's really odd um, with my personality. And it's kind of funny, because like on the business side, like I'll come to my publisher with like spreadsheets with, you know, ideas for promotional plans and stuff. But on the writing side, I'll give them like a paragraph. <laughs> and Kate's really wonderful. She'll just, she'll be like, yep, you know, she knows how I work and she knows I'll figure it out as I go. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's something about my brain when I write. It's kind of, I think, my only like real creative outlet. Like I'm not artistic or musical or anything like that. So it's like the one place I kind of um, get to be a little bit free. And so, yeah, I, I think I just love the adventure and kind of the unknown. I mean, my characters really surprise me and, and take me on journeys. So that's, that's really definitely the interesting part of it. That is beautiful. I love that. Can oh. you share a craft tip of any sort with us? Um, so I, I think because I don't do as much planning on the front end, I'm a really big reviser. I love the revision process. Me too. Um, yeah, it's, I, I feel like that's really when I get to just polish the story and probably where I try to step back and not be as free and be really critical with myself and try to kind of think of what would a reader pick apart. Um, I really like to print out my drafts. So I usually do, I do a lot of revision rounds. My first round I do on the computer and that's kind of like a high level, you know, really cleaning stuff up. And then I do a round where I print it out and I edit my hand with like a red pen. And I find that you really find um, new and different things when you look at your book in a different medium. So that's really helpful. And then I also like to read it on an e-reader because I feel like that kind of gives um, another different perspective. And I really do catch different things I've heard other people do like text to speech. 
So I think really kind of changing up the way you look at your book, um, whatever works for you definitely helps because it gives you kind of a fresh eye, which is hard when you're so deep in revisions. I love that. And I, I have this day right before I, I ever send a draft to my actual editor, not my agent or anybody else, but um, my my revised first draft ish and then my the last time I'm going to touch it, I reward myself with like five or six hours in bed on the Kindle, just reading it as a human being I reading a that. book. Yes. And it's so fun. And you're also using the highlight feature of Kindle to like mark everything that you would change. Yes. But it's just so fun to lie in bed and read your own book for the first time, you know, front to back, Aww. you know? So yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, what thing in your life affects your writing in a surprising way? Um, you know, I think, and I kind of mentioned this, but I just think writing is, um, I've been really fortunate that I kind of wall it off as like my little haven. So I do feel like it kind of is impenetrable to my life, um, no matter what chaos is That's going on. Awesome. It's always really nice for me that I can like disappear into a book. Um, and, and that's just really helpful. I think it, writing has definitely been like a sanctuary. If, you know, I'm stressed about something or I'm busy, you know, I can just kind of zone into my manuscript. Um, so I would say it's almost the opposite, that like it kind of isn't affected by things, um, which has been definitely nice. I think you're anomalous in that, honestly, because most writers I talk to, their life is what gets in the way and freaks them out and then they can't concentrate on your book, on their book. So you being able to do that, I think is kind of a superpower. Well, and I think what I find too that, and so maybe I should rephrase a little bit. I think that um, when there are things going on in the world that I have a reaction to, I've really been able to put that into my books. Mm. And I don't know if it's just been kind of serendipitous that it's lined up that the book I'm writing at the time tends to be something that kind of lines up with something I feel strongly about. So it really can kind of come through in the writing and I think I get to kind of use it almost cathartically to um, you know talk about my feelings through my characters and have them kind of look at similar situations so I think that part too I mean it, I wouldn't say it kind of you know it affects it in a negative way but it definitely kind of opens up for me to express myself I think. Do you work at home or do you go out to write? Um, it really depends mm -hmm. I I will say my productivity is usually better when I'm not at home. Um, like if I go to a coffee shop, I tend to do a little bit better. Honestly, though, then it gets into like I'm at a coffee shop ordering lots of coffee and, you know, it gets expensive. And yeah. So I, I don't do that often. Um, but if I'm in like a, a crunch time where like I have to finish the book, sometimes I'll just go sit somewhere for like 12 hours and write. Um, so, yeah, I, I really shake it up. I mean, I was I mentioned I was on a trip and I was editing in the car. Like I printed out my book and I was just like editing as I went. And I was like, okay, this, you know, um, oh man, we were like on vacation and I was in an arcade editing. Like it's just, you know, you kind of do what you have to do. Um, so it's not always the pretty like, you know, vision I think I had of what being a writer was. It's often just kind of messy and you, you write yeah. where you have to. And, you know, yeah, in an arcade. In an arcade. So. That is definitely the first time I've ever heard that one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's kind yeah, of that amazing. Was, it was actually not bad. I mean, I was like, oh, this could be worse. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, okay, great. What is the best book that you've read recently, and why did you love it? Um, so I always have a lot of uh, books I can play. So I'm going to give a few. Um, Good. I just finished Long Bright River um, by Liz Moore, and it's amazing. It was a thriller. It was kind of a mystery thriller, but set um, against kind of the backdrop of the opioid e epidemic. And it was just a really interesting um, angle that I hadn't seen being done. She's kind of a very literary mystery writer. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was just really lyrical and beautiful. Reminded me a lot of Tana French, who's a oh, favorite of mine. Um, so just really, and it really made me think about a lot of different things. Um, so really enjoyed that one. It was really surprising. And then one that's coming out on March 10th is, um, and they called it Camelot by mm -hmm. Stephanie Marie Thornton. And that's a historical fiction about Jackie Kennedy and I read it as an arc. Um, it's just phenomenal. I'm, I'm really excited for her. I think readers are really going to love that book. So that one's out on the 10th. Oh, that is very exciting. Thank you. I'm going to put both of those on my TBR pile. Speaking mm -hmm. of TBR piles, can you tell us about your most recent work and what they should put on their TBR pile? Oh, thank you. Um, so I have my next book is coming out June 16th. And it's called The Last Train to Key West. And it's set in Florida in the 1930s. Um, and it's Labor Day weekend, and one of the deadliest and most powerful, powerful storms in U.S. history um, hit the Keys then. 
and destroyed um, Henry Flagler's Railroad and wow. kind of wreaked a lot of havoc. There were a lot of World War One veterans who were down in the region working on um, building a highway. And unfortunately, they perished um, due to kind of insufficient warnings and they were supposed to be evacuated and there were issues. So it's this really kind of um, tumultuous time in U.S. history that I didn't know that much about. And so it was really interesting to kind of research it. And I have three heroines who are down there. One of them is related to my Perez family from um, next year in Havana and when we left Cuba and their lives sort of intersect um, as the storm is coming. That is amazing. And it addresses something I really, really love about historical fiction is real events that I, you know, you're from Florida, so perhaps you'd heard of that, Mm -hmm. but I am from California. I've never heard of that storm. I never heard about those men who perished. And that is fascinating to me. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I even being from Florida, I really hadn't heard about it. And it was just hurricane season. I came across an article that mentioned it. And you just get that kind of yeah. spidey sense of like, I need to know more about this. Um, and that's what I love about historical fiction. I'm constantly learning um, and constantly exploring periods of history that I'm surprised I don't know more about. Um, but it's fascinating to learn about them. I cannot wait to read that one. I am um, really looking forward to that. I love your writing. Uh, tell us where listeners can find you. Um, I'm on Instagram at, at Chanel Cleeton. Uh, my website is www.chanelcleeton.com. And then I'm on Twitter um, with my name and, and Facebook as well. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. And I am just so thrilled to talk to you. Thanks for well, inspiring thank my listeners. So. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is absolutely wonderful. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye.